Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux in which we're playing as Mongolia. Now, I've played as Mongolia before, but I still want to do the Roman von Ungern-Sternberg path with a sane route. Have him survive and, and win, leading to a sane route, and attempting to reclaim Russia and bring back the Tsardom under the chosen monarch, the late Grand Duke Michael Alexandrovich of Russia or his son. So if you're about a charge against Marin, please go ahead because this I've read this before and this is super important. Mad Baron was savage cut down in battle, and Gaida Marin has claimed his head and, and his throne. <clears throat> Versus, his forces routed. Gaida Marin escaped the maelstrom barely and fled on the Black Gobi. Oh, I mean, unchanged. Genghis Khan's second would not be an option. And then Ungan Sternberg was struck by an arrow, but he managed to reach his horse to escape to Urga. But we're going to go with the center option, because we tried out. Um, the Russians are watching. The Russian nation is still recovering from the recent civil war, concerned about continuing German dominance in the Caucasus. And the breakaway to the Transmere in the Far East. <clears throat> My apologies. This is a perfect time to assemble the War Council and decide where Mongolia goes next. Which is good. Which is very good. Followed up with what? And we'll close out of that. We will have to do God of War. Actually, it would be quite nice to do. Uh, Mongol, Minority, and Jaibi. Or we can have the luxury of letting our economy trundle along peacefully. We are people at war. And our industrial sector must be made aware of this. All must serve the Horde. Of course, we have an Air Force we could do, but we'll see about that. Um, the God of War will be very nice. Now, last time we did this, and I went, I did go down with the whole God of War path, which is a lot of fun. I also did go down this path. We might go down this path again, just because we... Just to see what happens, maybe. We'll see. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see what happens. Uh, but let's get this first. And I'm thinking we might do Mongol Minority in Zaibi. Zaibei? Lands of Zaibei and Xinjiang alike contain many of the enclaves of our people. With small rural villages and roving bands of tribesmen. However, spurred on by the chaos of this new age, debased and de fanatic nationalists have started inciting violence against their people, driving them from their homes and slaughtering their kin. We cannot stand out of the battle, watch the Mongolian brethren be dominated by the southern warlords again. I say, let's go ahead and do this one first, and then we'll do the God of War. For now. The Russians aren't watching. Only a few days have passed since the assassination of Kretsky, and Russia is still trying to re reorganize. They were too busy in their own affairs to notice much if we laid the groundwork for reclaiming our proper lands from our Chinese neighbors. Strictly claims to re recognize Mongol lands? Ordos. Ah. Remove Russian economic aid. We know as a Mongolian Khanate. The Chinese be darned unification for all Mongolians. It's not worth the risk. You know what? You might as well do that one. Oh, look at that flag. The Mongol Khanate. Very nice. Now, we do have the Scourge of the Steps, which is pretty good. The army prepares for war. Claims of greatness. Burra immigration. Unofficial help for the Japanese. Um, Overlord of Kovd. Gada Meren Uprising, which is really bad. And the 8th. Jebson Damba Kutuk Tu. But the army prepares for war. But the claim is declared against the mu Muslims in the south. The tensions between the Maklik and their state have been risen to an untenable level. And it's now ready to evolve into all out war at a moment's notice. As such, it has been deemed necessary to, that the army be mobilized in preparation for the possible war. We hope that these preparations will be enough when the time comes for Mongolia to show its might once again. Hopefully, we are as ready as can be. Now, I don't know why we have army reform. Army reform continues to get more organization. I don't see anything about that, but Temple Blessings. Our nation stands on the brink of war, and many of our soldiers fear for their lives in the coming maelstrom. An attempt to ease the spirits of the men while earning the grace of the gods. Our Khan has taken his armies to the Amar Bayas Galant Monastery, a massive Buddhist temple complex north of Urga, to give tribute to the gods and to pray for the coming battle. Let us hope this raises the morale of the men on the eve of the conflict. May fortune smile upon us. And we're going to go to war. Uh, I want more. Actually, I want more attack in all honesty. This stuff is all nice. Well, let's get more attack. After many months of fighting in the west of the nation, between bandits, rebels, and government troops, the revolt has finally been crushed. Look at this. Most rebels have dispersed, gone into hiding and fled the country, fearing for their lives. Orders come out on top, and the country is secure. However, there are still some bandit groups, small bandit groups, taking advantage of the destruction. They have to be dealt with. At last, the nation is safe, dealing with western bandits, which sucks, but give them political power, stability, uh, remove the western revolt. Wait, western revolt? Huh. All right. West Mongolia will no longer be demilitarized? Wait, what? Well, okay then. Oh, here's this. At least three divisions here. So let's go to war first, and then we'll do this whole thing. So I think that'd be a good idea. Hmm, we'll see. I know supplies aren't very good over there, but whatever. And then, how much do we get every single day? 0.76 is not bad. Yeah. Then breaks down Sichuan, which is okay. Mongol minority. Ungern's perished. In the past few months, it has become clear to the Baron that his rule is constantly in danger. Therefore, he's acquired a time to examine our current military staff and decide whether they're loyal to Ungern or whether it's time they saw a bullet. Let's root out the traitors. Alright, not bad. I still want to be very pretty, 
pretty heavy on cavalry, but there we go. Stairs a man lai batara dam din seren. The MD has fought on the side of Mongolia for decades, taking part in the Mongolian independence back in 1911. Though he opened the dialogue with the Man rebels at the time, he was arrested by the Chinese and almost died in a cell. It would have died had it not been for Ungern's Asiatic Cavalry Division taking Uga from Chinese control and freeing him. Many Mongolians see the old man as a unifying figure. I said that Mongolians are still able to lead in this Russian dominated government. However, perhaps his links to the man never went away. Though we have failed to find any evidence of this, perhaps he aided the man rebels against us and almost had, had led to our downfall. He constantly makes it clear that he doesn't serve us, rather serve Mongolia directly. Maybe it's time for the old general to meet his end. He is trustworthy? Goodbye. Aggressive assaulter. Oh, I don't have command power for that. That sucks. Uh, so in the army. We are at war now. God of war. Improve Ergo roads. Emperor of the Mong Mongols. Launch to Tibet. Attack Tibet. Well, they're not with us, so. Sovereign power. Well, let's do this one. I'll launch to Tibet. Our people worked together so long ago to terrorize these steps, and today we should do it again. Uh, Mongolia and Tibet can stand united against the usurpers in China and Russia and subjugate those who stand in their way. You know, at this point, uh, let's take a look. Uh, supply points. There really are not any in Asia. Oh, good God. That's gonna suck. You guys just try to go in. Now, you guys, why don't you go down here? If you can encircle them, that'd be great. That's always a point to encircle and destroy enemy divisions like that. So. Go like that. If you can't move fast enough, that'd be great. You go right there. Come on, move, 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 move. Nikolai, Nikolai uh, Kazagrandi. Nikolai Krasikandze has been working under Ungern Sternberg after he left Siberia during the Russian Civil War. Ungern almost had him purged back then, but his high skill level during the 1921 Man Revolution made Ungern let him stay. After that, he traveled to the west of the nation to put down rebellion and train anti-Chinese forces in the province of Dzungaria. It's clear that in this mission he failed. At the start of the Western Revolt, he was in, he was in Dzungaria rather than doing his job of putting down anti-government activity. <clears throat> Ungern's mistrust of him was obviously justified, however. Will his skills save him from being purged this time? <clears throat> Nikolai. Eh, where is he? Wait, what? Where, where is he? Nikolai. Oh, he's right here. My bad. Um, you know what's an infantry leader? He shows worthy. No, end him. Let's do it. We're gonna get someone else new. Ball and fall cynicism? Cool. As long as we can cut off supply for them. That's the most important thing. Status of uh, this group here. <clears throat> Dog talks Taiji's situation similar to that of uh, the MD. The old man formed an anti Chinese uh, group in uh, Inner Mongolia in 1907, for which he became a Mongolian hero. He was promoted to the rank of general by Abog Khan himself after he came to Urga following the revolution against the Chinese and expelled the Chinese troops. He worked with the bandit leader Zha Lama multiple times. That's really a worry about Dog Talk Zhaj lies. <clears throat> it was Zha Lama's Yum, Bais Bandits, who sparked. Uh, the start of the Russian Revolt just months ago. Perhaps the Tog Taij organized the bandits into rebellion so they could gain power for himself. Alright, so let's do the who. Uh, he's trustworthy. I'm gonna keep that guy. Yeah, I definitely wanna keep that guy. Uh, are you kidding me, man? Alright, you're gonna hold then. You're gonna go all the way down here. Dumb. Status so the officers. The officer class have proven their disloyalty over the past few months. With many officers deciding to align themselves with the opposing rebel groups, it's clear that many of the loyalties do not sit with us. Perhaps it's time the officer class will be cleansed of anyone who dare to declare themselves to an opposing faction. I'll be fine for them for now. Oh, come on. Man, we should really ally with Tibet. Assassin taken in Ungern Stenberg. While riding his horse and parade through Urga, a set of noise deafened the crowd. A noise, a shot that echoed throughout the city. They missed Baron Ungern by two inches. <clears throat> The assassin, 23-year-old man, was shot almost immediately. Ungern ordered the marching army to fire on the crowd, frenzied by the attempt on his life. The crowd dispersed in a panic of civilians or possibly man agents were killed by Ungern troops. After the city calmed down, the assassin had been identified as a member of the Mongolian Adin Nam. However, many peasants in Urga claimed this to be a fabricated by our government. This baron survived. That's important. It's good. You know what? I want you guys to hold. You're not winning here, and you're, you're kind of actually losing. And we're going to need as many divisions here as possible. So. Um. Yeah. Your retreat. Cut him down. Status of Alan Ochir. He's a prince from Inner Mongolia. He's only very recently traveled to Urga from Inner Mongolia. I had a recommendation from Prince Demchub Chug Dongrub. 
Should it be clear that his wives on the chopping block? He pushed to gain power to the chaos of the Western Revolt. It was his clique of princes and nobles who almost led to their downfall. Altan Ocher, still being quite low, a military leader. Should be obvious, one to be purged. Just worthy. Uh... He's got a recon guy. And him, whatever. Get in, go, 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 go. Power struggle in the Maklik. For many years, the Maklik has been led by family elder La Mu uh, Fu Jing Yang. In the clique, he was seen as a pillar of stability who would stop any power struggle occurring between the very divided Ma families. Many in China even see him as a stabilizer in the Northwest, ending Tibetan in our own aggression into the Chinese soil. But news has just reached us that Ma Fu Jiang has passed away. Currently, he's been replaced by Ma Lin, but another Ma, Ma Bu Fang, and Ma Lin already embroiled in a power struggle. This could be a perfect opportunity to take advantage of the Maklik's position. Good to know. Come on, take it. Now you guys are going to force the attack. Oh, wait, wait, what happened over here? Did they dwarf this too? Oh, come on. Okay, so I didn't realize that. Uh, that's turning into a, a, a mess that I don't think we can really handle. The purge has ended. Uh, with that, it's been decided the purge has come to an end. Many high up military figures were executed throughout the last few weeks, and all in the name of safety and justice for traitors. Those remain breathe a sigh of relief as the military staff, the nation grows ever smaller. That's necessary. Crap. Well, time to open this up more. Maybe we went to war too early. That was my fault. Um, in the meantime. Mm, what do we want here? I would like to use tanks in this campaign. Um, superior firepower is okay. Mass assault. Organization is always so good to do. A bit more organization might be really good. Um, the man guy. Doesn't make sense for to grab them, but we'll grab them anyways for now. So the biggest thing, the best thing we can do right now is literally just kind of hold out and get Tibet into our lines. Because the God of War is taking forever to do. Boyan Delegate gathers forces on Olan Ka border. Mongolian General B has generally stayed uninvolved in the power struggles happening currently in Urga for years. He's continued to live in Inner Mongolia, raiding Chinese shipments throughout the region. Now, we've just received reports that B Dude has gathered a large force on the border with Mongolik, likely to do some border raids in Olan Akab. Let the border raids begin. Hurry up here. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. So these guys are pouring in here, which is really bad, so I might have to replay this off screen, but he makes his choice. With a large force moving through Olan Kab, a thought occurred to Boyan Delgar. If it was going to take Guisui, he would have to do it back to control the province. With Ma struggling with internal conflict, it should not be too difficult to move his force through the region and take the city. Now it's decided whether he should do it or not. It's too risky. Do it. Let's get rid of that division. That's good. Um, you, don't go there. You, come right here. Matters of Princes. Ah, that's good. Um, the various princes, nobles, and aristocrats of Mongolian society have long influenced and control the political sta stage of the steppe. With the ascension of the Black Baron, uh, Roman von Ogun Steinberg, of the position of regent to the Vogue Khan, and its de facto control of the nation's every aspect, a final stance must be taken to deal with these ever meddling and annoying, ambitious men of Mongolia's high society. For the Baron, last three options, each with their potential benefits. Using some of his precious blood and blue, and his hordes are collected and salvaged over his career, the Baron can sway the favored princes and have them eating out of his hands. Though by far the most costly of the three options, this will also buy their loyalty permanently. Alleviating the Baron of an unnecessary headache that has plagued him his, plagued him his entire rule without the need for excessive violence, without causing further unrest in his already teetering nation. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the Baron can take the most enjoyable option for a man of his pleasures and delights, and choose to have these troublesome nobles hunted and down and arrested, with any of these foolish enough to resist meeting the cool justice of a cavalryman's arrow. Though this option will further drive up his spirits, morale, and plunder of the Baron's little cavalry hordes, it would also likely drive Mongolia further into chaos. Finally, the Baron can take the most simple and cheapest option available to himself, and simply ignore the princes and their unending chittery. They are just princes after all, and what are mere princes to a man of Ongun Sturberg's standing? Besides, if left alive and alone, the Baron's regime would be far better able to focus on more pressing matters of the state, such as the rioting groups of democratic protesters, or Buddhist extremists that gnaw away at an administration's foundation. Draw from the plunder pile and pay off every prince you can find. Simply so ignore these howling morons. Uh, draw from the plunder pile. That makes it easier. And what else are we going to do here? Mm, artillery? We don't really have artillery, do we? Yeah, we don't really have artillery. This is what we have. I didn't, I'll be honest, I forgot to do this too. Uh, okay, we have no planes to God dang it. That's not good. Uh, what else? Defending the army, I'll be okay. Continue army reform. Uh, let's do some more propaganda. Sport, war propaganda, whatever it is. Plus attrition. Well, that makes more sense to do right now. The God of War, and after that one, I wouldn't do some of that stuff. Of course, we'll do alliance with Tibet. Russian foreign policy. Oh, Russian friendship. Well, we'll see about that. Um, roads across the east. More infrastructure would be nice. Uh, military factories. We threw the roads. Civvies. Ooh. Our consumer goods will be increased by 5% while it's focused to active. Well, improved roads? Let's found the Urga Arms Factory. 
Our military infrastructure is befitting our geographic situation rather poor. If we want to equip our armies, we must produce more weapons, and that means fewer, new, newer, newer factories, and Ungern secures control. By the Ungern Sternberg and his Russian military clique have defeated the opposition, and have once again taken the reins of the Northern nation. Renewed by the vigor of the military victory, the Russian Lion Junta is ready to make the postulations into reality. Avgan Dorziev, patronized by Ungern, and a strange friend of the 13th Dalai Lama, A.D., has arrived in Ergen to meet with Ungern. Avgan has presented Ungern with a Kala Chakra Tantra reportedly written by the late 13th Dalai Lama proclaiming the deceased Sir Nicholas as the Arya Tara, the White Tara. This evidence appears to Ungern as validation for his monarchistic beliefs, and the two have struck up a strong friendship. Although Afghan's influence has been reduced by the Regency, this friendship will undoubtedly bring Ungarn's regime closer to the Buddhist theologians. The Tsar's power is legendary. Cool. Also, here we are now. Uh, Kumo Khan has down, finally perished and died, and uh, actually, they, they literally just capitulated to us, so it make, makes it quite easy for us. Let's see how far we can go with these guys. Actually, you, you guys should go right there. Um, we're still struggling down here a little bit, but we are currently doing centralized power under Ungarn Stambank. One of the problems that caused the revolt in the West and the chaos that descended into Ugra was because we were forced to share power. Well, radical Buddhists and rich princes had larger power in our government. Now, with them defeated, we could centralize power under Ungarn Sternberg so that he could protect the nation. Militarization at any cost? Total militarization. Um, so that's not bad. So I can kind of wait, though. Reinforce the Mongol army would be very nice to do as well. Even though doing all this stuff would be very good as well. Uh, Mongolian Air Force. Oh, we still down here, too. Reclaiming our lands. Oh, a new Russia. Industrializing Russia. Well, there's nothing about a navy which makes sense, but still. I do want to get another research slot. Do we have any research slots at all? Research slot. Let's take a look. The game one right here, ready for war, which would be good to go down, but we have to wait till Russia does something for that first. Or this here too, which would be not bad. The God of War, which we can't get to. Um, that's research bonus, no slot. And then we have the big military gamble, which actually would be good to go down that way. Um, and this one too. Oh, okay, so. Uh, I guess we'll reinforce the Mongol army. Through a series of forced conscription measures within the new borders of Mongolia, uh, using our tribal context to bring in more families, we'll expand the manpower available to us and reinforce our army. So, overall, not bad. We did do some encirclements over here. Oh, thank God we got more organization now. Ooh. So, like I said earlier, I, I'm not sure where I want to go, but mobile warfare sounds like the exact thing that we should probably honestly use because we are, well, quite a mobile force. Doing it like this should help eliminate a lot of supply that these enemies have over here. Jining? Hmm. Now, as you can see, the bet's in here with us, but uh, we're doing okay. If anything, I want you guys to go through here. Just take all this territory if you can. Make sure no one can really do anything about it. Can you actually win there? No, you probably can't, honestly. No, honestly. And who? Maybe? I want to definitely want to capitulate these guys, too. So we'll see about that. Uh, just take the territory if you can. Well, we got the capital, almost. Kashgar. Marsh holds on. Now, that should capitulate them. That should be enough to capitulate them. But, according to the game, it's not. Which is incredibly stupid. But, yeah, it's just a giant mess, as you can tell. Um, you do this, 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 maybe? Here, have one of you guys come here. Well, we'll see. They might move their divisions. They might not. We'll see what happens. Assassination attempt on Kolchak. Not bad. Kill them off if possible. That'd be great, 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 great. Um, where are we here? Come on, take it, 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 take it. Oh, you're about to get in circle. That's not good. Oh, a little bit of lag, but that's because we're autosaving, which is fine. Oh, we have been fully encircled by Holtan. Come on. You should be there by now. You literally should be there by now. Uh, go here. Do that. That's fine. <clears throat> now, we did get in circle here, which is quite bad, actually. But we did take some territory here, too. It's not bad. Uh, go here. You're going to keep doing that. you got to keep him there. Do George Norris. Okay. Well, whatever. Um, ever, 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 ever. After this one, we'll go with modern military doctrine. With the advent of modern weapons comes a need for modern tactics. We can't just ride over the deserts and mountains and hope for the best. We need to organize sustained strategy to support our army. Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay, so we have the capital now. Again. That should be good enough. Right? There we go. Thank y'all. 
Another group defeated, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Go right there, kill them off. This way, we can hopefully now concentrate our soldiers a little bit better. No. You're going to have to force the attack. I don't care what happens. If they die or you die. This god dang Chinese division is going to have to die. No matter what happens. Keep them in place for now. Uh, I guess we probably should do really well right there, too. Let's see. You want to help out? Here, go. Lan Tzu. Do that. Alright, that'd be good. There you go. Give him a place. Kill that division off, come on. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Actually, just go there. It's fine. Should do okay right there as well. Kamal sees his power, which is good. Do that too. Uh, it is almost 1937. Just go and start doing some of that stuff and get some arty, maybe. Well, maybe. Hey, we got him. Nice. Good job, guys. Take one guy, go down here, here, here. You guys can hold. order is gone which is fine whatever oh we got him nice that took quite a while Tibet we can have that one well let's take a look at what it looks like right now you know what you can have this one too then cool so we go to war with next Tibet where's the Mongol army Land auction will be good, but what's next up here? Emperor of the Mongols. This is the one first. Now that the tribes of the Mongolian people have been united under the banner of the singular leader once again. Shall our land seal itself from the world, protect our precious tradition people? Or shall we, like the great Temujin, lead a great and mighty host, travel the descendant and petty regimes of the East and West? Victory in Jaibi, Liangbang, Yi Yuan. After the great fighting, we have at last subdued the Western warlords. There is much to reward ourselves and soldiers here, including captured enemy supplies. How should the new populace, as well as these resources, be dealt with? Loot the lands and salt the earth? Incorporated peacefully. Mm. Well, honestly, if we get more cores, that's what I care about. Oxai? Chin? Yeah. Peacefully, we lose stability. We lose 5,000 manpower, is that it? Look at that one. Kashmir. Get cores on all sorts of this stuff here. Um, so we'll see. Not bad. Yeah, but who's next? Can I like just just follow like Shang-Chi? No. Crap. Oh, brought to you. Oh, immigration's gone. Okay. Oh, he leaves uh Urzin Garmev leaves for Barat, Mongolia. The establishment of a new state in trends by Collar General uh U G, an ethnic Barat Mongolian has decided to return to his homeland service people. Well off you go then. That sucks, bro. There, head over here. Well, trains well. Continue army reform would be nice. Um, we get at least three divisions here. So that'll be good. We're pretty much going to put the entire army here, too. Make sure everyone's the same division template. I mean, they're only 12 combat with, which is not great, but, you know, we'll work on it. Um, in the meantime, embrace the future Panzer leaders. I kind of like political loyalty just because that seems like what it would be for us right now. Um, Stacer's military motorization effort. I like that a lot. Proper heritage makes more sense for us right now, too, though. So, professional officer corps, I like that one a lot. Proper heritage just seems like it makes a lot more sense for us right now, though. Maneuver warfare, and that makes a lot of sense for us, too. Victory of death one's really good, too. Probably a victory of death. I'll probably go with that one for this campaign. Um, what else do we have? Build stuff faster if you can. We don't have that many factories, whatever. Um, <laughs> There you go, and do that. Give that for now. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Oh, you're not even connected. You know, Thieke falls in a civil war. Very cool. Very cool. Oh, yeah, look at that. I guess we send volunteers to these guys. You know, we might as well at this point. 
Yeah, grab one dude here. Do we even have any planes? Oh, we do have an air, air base, but no planes. Demobilize our economy, we're not going to do that. We want to keep it high. We'll lose 5% stability, but whatever. For now, it's okay. Emperor of the Mongols. Now that our cowardly enemies are defeated, nobody can stop our Khan from restoring the past glory of Mongolia. With most of Central Asia in our hands, Ungan Khan rules all of Mongolia peoples and everyone living in a yurt. Swears allegiance to him alone. A man beyond capabilities of our other mortals, Ungan is thought of by many Mongolians as an avatar of the god of war in the very least, as a reincarnation of the great Genghis Khan, and with his newest victories, these doubting claims could be, have been reduced to a mere handful. Fueled by the sweet fruits of victory, Ungan Khan has convened a grand assembly in Urga to manifest the triumphs of Mongolia's recent conquests. The question, however, remains whether or not the mad baron will satisfy himself with the establishment of Greater Mongolia or take his faithful tribal forces and his hardened savage division further on the path of ambition, madness, and glory. Bogd Khan is the only Khan Mongolia needs. Back to Brotherhood. Fellow monarchist regimes of former Eurasian alliance. Tibet and Bhutan. <clears throat> That's been six days, along with the Japanese. We could do that. Uh, force us to share any industrial gains we make in China through Bantetsu. To become the face of our alliance. Mm, I don't like the Qing because they fought against us, so I don't like that at all. I guess back to Brotherhood. Sternberg has envisioned an alliance of strong kingdoms loyal to the tradition of Eurasian culture. Our brother have built off mutual respect and strength. With the entire revolution and anarchy sweeping former monarchies, it is of great interest that this potential alliance of nations be formed as soon as possible. Well, we'll see. Oh, deal with Ja Lama. The Blue Deal finish off Gaida Meren? Yeah. The infamous peasant bandit leader Gaida Meren and his forces seize a major bridge on the Trans Mongolian Railway, pursuing the Lake Garrison. To join him in their occupations, they attempt to bring the Vada line to a complete halt. Being observed by Sternberg and his men from a ridge, Gaida Meren has fortified his position and he's only further entrenching his position with time. Sternberg does not have them enough men in the scouting party to overcome Marin's forces decisively, meaning a bloody and exceedingly risky conflict would ensue. But Sternberg also does have his artillery battalion at his disposal, and with the guns in range, he has the ability to destroy a guide of Marin's forces. However, such a barrage would greatly risk a bridge's result, leaving the Mad Baron with a tough decision to make. Fire. Bring down the peasant warlord. The artillery barrage split open the skies with screaming shells tore through the air before colliding with the bridge, detonating in a violent explosion that utterly decimated the bridge's supports. As the structure began to collapse, God of Marin and his men attempted to make a hasty withdrawal. However, Sternberg, filled with vengeance and a desire to slay this bandit lord, ordered for his artillery detachment to uh, loose another volley, hoping to wipe God of Marin and his forces from the map. The second barrage hit heavier than that. Last, the guns now find the perfect firing solution in arc after arranging with the first barrage, hitting with deadly accuracy. Seemingly, it further decimated the bridge's foundation and the support beams, but frustratingly, frustratingly missing the bulk of God of Marin's forces. Enraged, Ungern also ordered a salvo after salvo until the barrels of his howitzers re glowed red hot, and his ammo was largely spent. As the smoke began to clear, the bridge lay in absolute ruins, uh, severing a vital connector of the trans siberian Railway while God of Marin and the last of his surviving forces have long since fled into the countryside of the Cacophony. Absolutely enraged, Ungern drew his service revolver and quickly executed the closest artillery officer near him before mounting his horse and riding up backwards, or back towards Urga, with both the bridge he needed to defend now destroyed and his nemesis once again slipping away. He won't be a threat anytime soon. Wow, they got him circled here too. Man. Bro, that sucks. Deal with Jalama? The blue deal. After a recent complaints, Baron, uh... Uh, Roman von Ungern Steberg has uh, written out once again to pacify to uh, warlord Ja Lama, who has grown unpopular with the people of Kolb. Steberg, along with oh, his elite Russian guard, entered the camp of Ja Lama while being trapped with the beady eyes of the Lama's battle hardened forces and made their way towards the central yurt. There, the Lama sat playing cards with the generals, old and wise and yet completely drunk and surrounded by a horde of plunder and weapons. One such weapon in the Ja Lama's illustrious collection was the Russian Federal, a weapon Steberg had once also used in a shared struggle with Ja Lama. As the bear began to speak, it was swiftly shushed and pushed back by Jalama's guard, not wanting the game to be disturbed or the master to be angered, aroused from his drunken super. In took response, the Baron's men drew the weapons and awaited his orders. The Baron thought to himself for a moment. He had two options. He could either strike the arrogant fool where he sat down now, ending his reign of terror and securing the city of Cod for ourselves, however. None can deny that despite the, his eccentricities and barbarism, Jalama was a great warrior and would serve the state well. I had to think for his brief moment the Baron stepped forward and made his call. Stand down, be grateful to have such a wise and bold man amongst the ranks. In a flash, the Baron shot Jalama through the head as the men charged into the yurt. More stability, but let's do that one. Uh, Ak Zhang Faithful come to Ungam. From the R8 mountains near the island of Chinggis Khan's birth comes a revival of the old ways, a shaman, Chet, Cheplan, or Chelpan, has reported wide seeing a wide rider in white, the blue Burkan. Chet has organized burial out churches in order to revoke Buddhism in the lands of our ancestors, and suppressing our history with his claim that the Oirat will <clears throat> be delivered by some white savior. This is obviously referring to the great Baron Ungern himself, and so Ungern's officers suggest inviting Chet to Urga to preach his message of hope. Though people within himself, thyself, 
and go silver, a nation white Altai, thou who illuminest the day, the sun, Barkan, those who illuminest the night, moon, Barkan. Wow, how did you win there? Get these guys so fast. Oh, is it because they... Uh, oh, they lost moment. Oh, shh, Nikes, that's really bad for them. Well, I'll just go in, I guess. Take this dude. Oh, is it... Okay, well, whatever. Holy crap! That was fast. That does not include cavalry, does it? Oh, it does! Okay, that's really good. Plus, flat 15 is pretty good. That's their ambitions. Goes out of that one. Um, if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. This is—I've read this one before. I'm pretty sure. So, who could tame such a beast? Back to Brotherhood. Of course, we'll still do this one too. But the Khan Cavalry would be really nice. Recruit Ungern's Guard. I think I did this one last time, and I like this one more just because you do get more organization, speed, and recovery rate. But this one you just get blueprints, which is okay. But I do want to try some armor, and you get better motorized and whatnot. So. Modern military doctrines is be very good to do. But I'll see what this one next. Oh, they don't. Oh. Jing Imperial Authority. Wait, what? Pu Yi is a current leader. Okay. A sovereign power. From the Brotherhood of Eurasia, those brought the options of our alliance. Otherwise, it would be grand and a boost for a conquest. That's actually really, really good, too. This will broaden our options for alliance. I kind of want to go down this way again, but a lot of the Japanese would be interesting, too. Hmm. Because they did go this way last time. Go all the way far, far to the left here. A new mandate. In fact, a brotherhood, though. Oh, there we go. Yeah. A lot of the Japanese. A delegate from the steppe. A lot of the Turkmen's conquer them. I kind of want to conquer them, but an alliance would not be bad, either. Gotta deal with them. Um, I do have that research slot, but it's not extremely necessary. A Russia policy. You stand alone. Because I do want to fight off Russia. Um, depending on what the Japanese do here, there's still a Transit Mirror. That part of Japan's up there, too. Who's over here? Yui Mitsui. Huh. And by Bhutan. And the Kingdom of Sikkim. Siam. Where's Sikkim? Nepal. Oh! We could, yeah. We lost 5% of the ability, but whatever. Well, let's do both of those. And oh, I want to do some... Oh! I got rid of the bonus fits. Ah, you know what? You could try an alliance with the Japanese. Let's do an alliance with the Turkmen's first. Wow, the Khan might easily, easily crush a petty, a petty Turkic warlords with its endless horde. One well, might still consider the wisdom of allying with one of the regimes against the other, for they still sons of the great king has come. And every Turkmen soldier who does not die in the wake of a great host shall live to ride amongst its numbers for our cause. Uplift the people from the steppes. With their initial conquest and period of stabilization over, it's time to now look towards our cousins and neighbors in Central Asia. Heartland of the steppe. And this arid expanse stands potential allies and righteous enemies for a horde to trample on hoof. But before we crusade to these lands, we must first choose to align with one of the groups there to make our conquest easier and the assimilation process afterwards smoother. All potential allies, we have three possible options. The least likely is giving the land to Coquitlam, a liberal democratic haven where jadists and cognomists factions battle for supremacy over this blossoming republic. Though having little in common with the regime's ideals, it will likely be beneficial in our attempts to pacify these lands post-conquest. Alternatively, we could reach out to the more conservative of Kivo, or especially Bukhara, whose state ideals are more inclined with the Khans. What nation shall we align with as we charge into the barren deserts and air plains of Central Asia once more to retake the rest of the steppe for the Khanate? Go with Bukhara. Oh, I can't do anything there, which sucks. Play Persia eventually. Um, I, I, I don't want to go with the Japanese, but I kind of think we should. So, uh, Mantle, of course, Faded Chun. I like that one a lot. I like that one a whole lot. Align with the Japanese. Let's do the reform Russia policy. With Baron Sternberg going to see himself as a Russian first, let's look back to the rapidly changing Russian political landscape and change the policy on how we look at them, and align with the Japanese. Though uh, between the two ascendant empires, the ambitious Japanese and a great and mighty Baron otherwise seem set on butting heads over the fate of Asia, Japan under the Yamato dynasty seems like a promising ally. Well, that could be the keystone to driving out the perfidy of a revolution and decay from Asia. Perhaps a compromise might be reached to satisfy both our ends. The Empire of Japan joins our alliance. The Emperor of Japan has joined our invitation to join the Brotherhood of Eurasia. Our united governments will now cooperate in any future conflicts. United, we should conquer all who oppose us. So, that's great. I didn't realize that Japan would actually join us. And we actually got... Basically, Transmira as our own puppet, which is kind of insane. Um, but we do have an issue. 
because I didn't realize that we needed Puyi to be down here too. Actually, Puyi already is down here. The right now we're reforming Russia. Uh, but due to conflict with Urga, Genghis Khan the second needs to rule Mongolia. So, requires Empire. Oh, we've not. We have in interfered, intervened in favor of Nanjing. So, I kind of screwed up this campaign already. My bad. Uh, also, the Turkmen's rejected us, which does suck. Uh, so, yeah, we're kind of stuck. So, basically, now we've got to use Khan's commands for this stuff. Which does really suck, so I apologize for that. I maybe I should have attacked Tibet, but, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, I really screwed this up. <clears throat> My bad. I, I screwed this up, this campaign up already, which really does suck. Uh, I did send volunteers to America. Order restored in Enkaishu. Uh, while they still labor under the Mongolian control, the Far East military has asserted enough control over its own borders that is similar to the time is not possible. It's not independence, far from it, but it does mean they no longer have to rely on Mongolian troops to secure the borders, and that's not so totally under control. So be it. Also, he did send soldiers down here. The CSA has already capitulated. The federal government and the CAR actually had a peace agreement for a while, and then they just killed each other off. So that's pretty insane. And I just sent volunteers down here just because we could. So yeah, we're fighting down here in East Asia as well. And I think we want to send someone else to maybe Serbia, maybe? Maybe? I don't know. We'll see. It's Papa Serbs. Cool. Alright, I'm still suffering from supply loss, which is... God, I hate. Mongolia is just so bad fight and, and be around. Oh, the Japanese Cold Prosperity Sphere. So one part about being a military alliance, one part about economic cooperation, though both aspects were overlorded by the Empire of Japan, which looms large over Eastern Asia. The Japanese are determined to fight against encroachment of Western imperialism, even if, to some degree, they mean becoming imperialist themselves. Withdraw from the sphere? Uh, yeah. No, I don't think we want to do that. I don't want to think we want to, want to withdraw. Makes sense to work on the ultimate weapon. Nuclear Mongolian warlords. Okay. Oh. We could. We really could. Nepal. Oh, Nepal, are you part of us? No, okay, that's good. Yeah, they're struggling down there, which is fine. So we're reforming Russia. And once that is done, we'll use Khan's commands to do conference at Urga. So my apologies for screwing this up, man. My bad. Serbia is really getting walloped by the Bulgarians. Romania's not intervening, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Who am I to say what they should do? And you guys are just kind of hanging out here, too. Can you guys actually win there? Doesn't look like it, so just gonna hang out. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want you guys to hang out as well and go with you. Just hang out on the front line. It's gonna be probably pretty problematic. Uh, this division is what? 18 combo width, which is not bad. I did go ahead and grab. Oh, you are gonna die now. Um, this one, proper heritage. So, makes it cheaper. Makes it very cheap for us to actually do all this stuff, which is great. Oh, good god. You just literally killed yourself off, Serbia. Why? Why did I sell it to Serbia? I should have went with Bulgaria. Or you can do that one too. Quartermaster Rook found. <clears throat> Quartermaster Vladimir Rook has been found by Ungun's agents in Shenyang, where he's running an agricultural commune called the Tri Artel Commune. This commune is using stolen funds from Ungun to feed the homeless and destitute. While we can't recover our assets, we have to ensure that Vladimir Rook will no longer be able to carry on his idealistic work. I would have fled to Spain myself personally. <clears throat> Our Russia policy. For many years now, we've aligned to Russia. Now, however, that after the end of economic assistance to us after the death of President Kerensky, it's coming to question whether we should continue to follow the Russians. However, aligning against them would also call into question why we as Russians are leading, leading in Mongolia. We must go our own way. We ally with Russia once again. Isn't the, my whole entire goal to take out Russia? So, for Russian friendship, give citizens, organization max planning, economic assistance, research slot. Or cast a dice alone. When the following is true, which doesn't go our own way. Uh, ready for war? We get a research out over here, anyways. We stand alone. Oh, well, we can still go that one. As for guarantees, the Northwest conflict has ended. Um, prepare for Eschaton. Which wouldn't be bad. Slay the pretenders across the mirror. I mean, which makes no sense. We already have them under us, so make, going this way makes no sense. So, let's go our own way. Cast the alone. <clears throat> the Russians abandoned us as soon as their position changed. We must act alone, for we are the ones we can, we can trust. A conference at Urga. The Japanese agreed to meet with us in our esteemed capital of Urga to hash out a solid and final solution concerning the fate of China. Long as the Middle Kingdom serves a thorn in the sides of both Mongolia and Japanese people, and with our cooperation, their downfall is all but guaranteed. We should prepare an official proposal for what our aims for the conference will be, particularly concerning how China will be governed in the light of clear result of our alliance's victory. It would, however, quite be clear that the Japanese will wish to, will wish to preserve the widespread and ever-growing economic influence over China and all of wider Asia. What are the outcomes of our cooperation after much thought 
out of consideration, we've decided to propose for... Now, last time we did this one, Mental Yuan, which I like. I personally prefer. I like that one way more. But, <clears throat> with all of these saying no, and this one too, a new mandate might be the way we want to go. A new management would be made for the mandate based on the Feng Shuang government. We could try that one. A new mandate. Um, despite the ineffectual and futile efforts of the Germans and petty warlords to hide it, the blindingly obvious reality is that the Manchu Qing have already lost their mandate. However, in accordance with the Chinese legacy, the mandate still requires a new emperor, thus we must sponsor a new dynasty to take his place. For in the face of the rebuke of heaven, a new dynasty shall always come out to replace the old. Sponsor the new dynasty's claims to the mandate of heaven, backing their claims over China in exchange for the support. American volunteers, it's all getting out. All I care about is getting more XP at Conference Energo. After tens and hostile times, uh, negotiations with Japanese have finally been made to see reason to accept our terms. With a handshake between the two divine avatars and a flick of a pen, the Japanese Empire and the Mongolian Khanate stand united as sovereign empires and guardians of East Asia. The Ergo Conference is finally settled, and from this point on, our military and economic spheres are united. United, our brother shall reign over all, of the, all over the East. I mean, okay, yeah. Kind of already figured that, yeah. You know what, at this point, as much as I want to keep that, I mean... Of course, are we trading away for stuff? Yeah, we are. There we go. And what else? Hmm. Air Force stuff, close air support. Can't really use this too much, on all honesty. Jump off, that's fine. For now. If you guys can actually win there, I don't mind doing that, but still. Ooh. That's not bad, actually. Serbs, just don't lose my divisions. Please, for the love of God, do not lose my divisions. That's my only real big concern here. You know what, make, work on the ultimate weapon? Fine, so be it. Nice good job, guys. Catholic dies alone. A new mandate. Check Chinese Mongols. Promise New Mongolia. Well, keep going on this way to get ready for war. Promote Mongol identity. For more stability. <clears throat> if we're to ban Russia's safety, we should promote Mongolianism to keep the uni nation united. Pretty much for now. They're international, alright. How are we doing down here? Doing alright. He's definitely learning some stuff. And Serbs? Well, it's a bit of a mess, not gonna lie. These guys are just not going to give up until they're literally all dead, because the north is fine. Keep learning, keep learning, keep working. <clears throat> Alright, keep working on the railroads, even though we got more factories back, huh? Alright, whatever. I want to attack here, but... We might as well try. All they have are infantry, and we do have... These guys are supposed to be 18 combat with artillery engine engineers. We're pretty much out of everything, which sucks. Help me out, I guess. So, working down there, not bad. Can you guys actually win there? You know, you might just be able to. Maybe. Just maybe. New mandate would be very good. If anything, we'll get subs, but we're probably not even going to have a navy this campaign. This is Belgrade. My supplies are pretty bad, huh? So come over here. Come back over here. Alright, bad. Over here too, so you don't die completely. Keep up putting them out over here, which is not bad. And I'm still putting up railroads. Yeah, they got still a lot of militia. Okay, maybe not. Oh, we're completely cut off, so the capital should fall. I mean, come on, man. <clears throat> Can we call my divisions? We're still getting a lot of army XP, though, hopefully, from these. Oh, secret history of the Mongols published. A Mongolian author, Tseden Damtin Seren, has managed to find a chance of copy of Secret History of the Mongols from his Chinese text into Kalka Mongolian. This enabled the story of Temujin, Chinggis Khan, to be authoritatively told. In the spirit of Ungern, uh, 
Included a forward claiming that the events of the Secret History teach a lesson to all Mongols, assuming such a prophetic life as Ten Jujins has happened uh, many times after her. And Russia under Peter the Great did a co great conquest it take place. There, restore the honor of the Mongols. All true. Okay, well, whatever. New mandate. Yeah. There goes Serbia, yeah. Oh, new mandate. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so now, reform government of China over here. Qing Imperial Authority doesn't like us. <laughs> Since the declaration of dynastic rule in Feng Xiang once more, there's been much talk about little decision about whether the dynasty should be placed on the throne of China. The two primary schools of thought are either an alt existing alternative China, noble, be enthroned or to invite the rule of Japanese imperial family, the former is most popular by far. Supported by and resigned and grumbling nationals and more pragmatic elements alike. While well, the latter has the backing of the Concordia Association citing Pan Asian values, our alternative exists to both these camps, though they lack much popular support. The small but outspoken group claims that only through crowning a new monarch that neither side chiefly supports is the only way for China to remain unified and the only candidates are fitting. Noble blood are Buddhist friends of the West. Chinese China. Two empires shall be united. A third option? A great Yuan? Um, that makes more sense for us, probably. <clears throat> would we put would we put us on the throne? I don't know. I mean, we, last time we did the Great Yuan as well, but I do want to see. What, wow. Well, third option for China. We decided that the Dragon Throne, in pursuit of fairness and indifference to the various factors of allied for this coveted position, must have an occupant detached from the current political struggle. As up to us, heirs of the Jin High Revolution and the new dynasty of China, to choose us to lead the Middle Kingdom as a new emperor. We could either crown the infamous Khan Ungern Steinberg, for he himself has shown interest in the position and proved to be a loyal ally and a reclamation of our homelands, but the ramifications could be seemingly given his past and beliefs. <clears throat> Alternatively, we could grow, crown the respected Bog Khan as a new emperor, as technically Ungern Steinberg, even though his near divine status is still region to this great Khan and reincarnated Tulku. Finally, to appease as the Buddhists of China, Mongolia, and the Himalayas, we could take a far more radical option. They could either place the Thunder Dragon Emperor in Bhutan as a new monarch, or instead place the 14th Dalai Lama himself on the throne. The Chao would serve as a viable tool to manipulate for the use as a new spiritual national rally and figure for the restored kingdom. Bog Khan? Genghis Khan II. There's only one soul to fit the rule of China crown the 14th Dalai Lama. Thunder Dragon Emperor is the only man fit for the Dragon Throne. I'll do that one. Just because I don't want to have Ungern Steinberg do that, just for now. So, it is what it is. I've really screwed this campaign, holy crap. Oh, yeah, look at that. Nice. Something different than what, we did than what I've done previously, so. Uh, we're still fighting down here. Oh. American Volunteers doing all right. Nice. So we can do Blitzkrieg, but we don't. We literally don't have tanks. So that literally makes no sense for us to do. Motorized infantry recovery rate. I mean, mobile infantry seems like probably the most logical choice for us. Okay, Manchuria. Hmm. Attract Chinese Mongols. Many Mongolian people are trapped under Chinese control. We should try to attract them to immigrate here so that they can serve us. Much. Pretty much. How are you doing down here? Oh, we're struggling. But what else is new? But Brother Jade is looking pretty thick, actually. Um, Southern Nationalist Group. We honestly don't like either side, so any side that's being weaker will probably support us to make this last longer. We can't support these sides. Okay, so. Whatever. Yeah, I want to try something different here. So that's why I chose these guys. Ooh. Oh. Well, 
I guess these guys are going to be very aggressive now. Ooh, Sean, she's dying. Uh, you know, you might as well. Then again. We're fine on their side. So now we're at war. And Japan's here too, so we might as well just call everyone in as well. Armor trains. I think we really need war uh, the guns, the railway guns, but you know what, whatever. Supply is probably really bad down here anyways, but we could try to send like maybe half the guys here. Um There you go. After Chinese Mongols, then what? Claim Trans-Siberian Railway. The Trans-Siberian Railway that runs over Mongolia has massive Mongolian minorities. It's rightful Mongolian clay. And thoroughly, though we are very likely to untake it, it's a strong show of force for people to claim it. Ah, I think I finally got motorized. 38. Rev Flood, if you want to put that, please go right ahead. Tokyo Conference. The Japanese sent an invitation to their Pan Asian Confederation or Conference Tokyo. Their state aims to produce cooperation between Asiatic nations against Western imperialism, which is an outwardly noble aim. However, some have urged us to ignore it, which claiming that it's merely a ploy to woo us into sign over our independence of the Japanese Empire, whose quest for domination in Asia is just beginning. No, we're going to show up. They're our allies. Now we can go back. We're coming to just good. Where's this? Nepal? Oh, crap. Oh, I'm going to decline that for now. Oh, boy. That's not good. A leopard is president, huh? I guess at this point you might as well just do that like this. Oh, I just just go to war. There you go. That'll be fine for now. Check Chinese Mongols. So oh, now we're at war. We got lots of conflicts going on now. Office would be good for army XP and whatnot. Even air XP. No, well, I guess we don't really have too much air stuff going on anyways. Grr. We need some logistic companies as well. That'd be nice. Tokyo condemning Western Imperialism. Our delegates are apparently being asked to put their names on a fairly standard decision. It condemns anti-Asian racism, the exploitation of oppressed peoples by European powers, and the institutions of unequal treaties which, through which mechanism the populations of Asia are deliberately kept disenfranchised within their own lands. Should we join that part of Japan in this interview? We'd rather not. Of course. Ready for war. While alone we must prepare for war, we are surrounded by threats, so we must act accordingly. Literally surrounded by threats concerning Pan-Asian trade. Therefore, the attendees of this conference could agree that in order to promote Pan-Asian cooperation and brotherhood, treaties concerning trade should be set up and brought to the top national agenda in each nation with a view towards establishing a common Asian customs area and protecting the economies of Asiatic peoples from the predatory Western economic principles which are sound good to me. Or should the Tokyo calls for economic integration? Either way, a proposal has been brought before the conference detailing Japan's desire for deeper economic ties to go beyond simple trade policies we agreed to. It would be a big step, but it could also be a greater benefit of the Japanese economy than our own in the long term. We'll go with it for now. Get rid of their militia. Oh, thanks, guys. Calls for military action. The Tokyo conference today erupted into controversy when the Japanese unveiled the true gamut, having won, uh, oh, look at this. Oh, nice. Uh, economic agreement with the protection project from us. 
now turned into this into a promotion of grand military alliance against Germany and other Western imperialist powers. This is what ideal of course see them play a leading role. Are we really content with this idea? Together for all nations. Nice. And we also the Philippines, not bad. Ooh, we're actually losing here, aren't we? Of course we're fighting over rivers as well. That sucks. You got your ballad with us, we could have helped you out, but you chose not to. Oh, go, Japanese Marines, go, 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 go. Ready for war, be great to do next, too. We will have to fight these guys off, too, eventually. And so that's the case. I kind of doubt we could actually really win there, so you guys can do it like this. You guys go by yourself. Well, we're not war, 38, so it is what it is. Keep attacking us, see what happens. Oh, shnikes. Of all times to do it now, he chose now to do it. Alright, so let's get screw it. Probably going back to the front line here. You bunch of dingleberries. You don't, don't go here. I'm gonna we'll still hold here. I mean, still mountains. It's pretty tough to break through there. We might struggle over here a little bit, but it's gonna be quite the grind, probably. If they want to do that, that's fine. With us here, we should do okay ish. It's a lend lease. Military propaganda. Con cavalry. Might as well. Gov's already forced throughout feared throughout the region region of like by call and a few improvements to the training organization will update them for modern military. Yes, and easily win there, which is great. Can you guys win here maybe? How strong are these guys? They are mountains, don't forget that. You never know. Good. Uh, we're okay for now. Do you guys actually win here? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. You guys can hurry up through that one of these. You know what? Go here. We might be able to do better if we just encircle them, actually. Come on. And we're almost there. More support's fine still. There you go. That'll be good. As long as no one else moves, we'll be okay. 
Railway guns. 38. No coordination. Put a hole here. One here to hold for now. My biggest concern is that these guys will not die. I want these guys, the Shang-Chi, to die first. So we're just going to hold for now. As everyone is still continuing to attack us, we've lost about 13,000. We're getting wine chuck. We're to think about, but whatever. Mm, finest hour, there's that. Combine arms. I would like more tactics, though. Well, we're using mostly just cavalry for this campaign. I'll grab one, too. Why not? Anything there? Anything there? Ready for war, of course. Be very good. It's good to do that, too, I suppose. Is that a supply point? No, it's not, so. Try that as well, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Parappa the Rappa. You guys do well there? No. Yes, no, yes, no, no. Let these guys struggle a little bit first. Oh, he just got in circle, you ding dongs. I'm concerned about how, wh the, how poorly these guys are doing up there, though. As you guys die first, and I think we'll be okay. But I think we'll end the episode here. Uh, let's finish off ready for war so we can know the research slot, which would be great. Military propaganda, we stand alone. Um, that wouldn't be too bad to do, but I would like to do the Con Cavalry next, of course. Which would be great, great, great. Spare for this one, which would not be bad. Put that one, Con Cavalry. Um, hmm. Motorized armor. I mean, at this point, I did say I do want to go down this way, but recruiting his own guard probably would be the way to do just for now. Yeah, because this just seems, makes more sense to go down this way. But, um, what else do we want? I kind of want to go down this way. Extensive war games. Continued theoretical study and the strategy for ground troops can only go so far as been suggested we perform simulations and exercises to further develop our doctrines. We should implement a large-scale study immediately. Review war games results. Reviewing the results of the past war games and simulations together with the latest military developments will serve to give us a clear picture of the development of modern warfare. Young officer schools. We should try to get the best officers we can for military, and a great way to do this is to start training them from a young age. The opening of multiple young officer schools in Mongolia should help bolster our officer class. And the big military gamble. We're now comfortable in investing greatly in our chosen military doctrine, knowing with confidence that, of course, it will serve us the best in destroying the enemies of Mongolia. But if you enjoyed the video, give a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue fighting the enemies of Western Imperialism. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.